Hello, I'm Holly Lee Knox with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, I'm here to discuss Proposition C, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 4th. Proposition C is a charter amendment that would change the way the city funds and administers services to children, youth, and their families. Proposition C would extend the Children's Fund and the property tax set aside for 25 years until June 30th, 2041. Proposition C would increase the property tax set aside gradually over the next four years to four cents for each $100 of assessed property value. The proposal would not increase or otherwise change property taxes. It would only affect the amount of property tax revenues set aside for the fund. Proposition C would also extend the age group served by the Children's Fund to include youth aged 18 through 24 years old. Proposition C would extend the Public Education Enrichment Fund for 26 years until June 30th, 2041. Proposition C would extend funding for universal preschool to include three, four, and five-year-olds. The city would also use these funds to develop services for children from birth to three years old. Proposition C would create an Our Children, Our Families Council to advise the city and school district on the needs of children and families in San Francisco and on priorities, goals, and best practices for addressing those needs. Every five years, the council would adopt an Our Children, Our Families plan to recommend new city policies and programs for children and families in San Francisco. The purpose of the plan is to create a more coordinated and efficient system of services. Proposition C would divide the existing rainy day reserve into a city rainy day reserve and a school rainy day reserve. Under the proposal, 25% of future rainy day deposits would go to the school reserve and 75% would go to the city reserve. Under Proposition C, the school district could withdraw up to half the money in the school reserve in years when it expects to collect less money per student than in the previous fiscal year and would have to lay off a significant number of employees. The school board could, by a two-thirds vote, override those limits and withdraw any amount in the school reserve in any year. If you vote yes, you want the city to amend the charter to support services to children, youth, and their families by extending the Children's Fund for 25 years and increasing its funding, extending the Public Education Enrichment Fund for 26 years, creating an Our Children, Our Families Council, and dividing the existing Rainy Day Reserve into a City Rainy Day Reserve and a School Rainy Day Reserve. If you vote no, you do not want the City to reauthorize the Children's Fund and the Public Education Enrichment Fund, or to make these changes to the Charter. I'm here with Sandra Fewer, president of the San Francisco Board of Education and a proponent of Proposition C. We're also joined by Marcy Berry, vice chair of the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for joining us. We'll start with some opening remarks, beginning with you, Ms. Fewer. Thank you very much. So Proposition C is a ballot measure on this November's ballot to reauthorize a portion of the city's general funds to be set aside to provide services to San Francisco's children and youth. It combines two existing funds, the Children's Fund and the Public Education Enrichment Fund, to join together to better align services for our youth. These two funds have improved the lives and education of hundreds of thousands of children in San Francisco. To give some examples, this fund Fund has funded 73 fully credentialed teacher librarians, 45 PE teachers, um, our science, technology, engineering, and math work. So this has, has had great impact. These two funds have a great impact on San Francisco's children for the, the past decade. And so we hope to reauthorize it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Your opening remarks, Ms. Berry? Yes, the Libertarian Party of San Francisco has recommended a no vote on this uh, proposal because we have challenges with all three components of the proposal. First of all, the Children's Fund does not just fund science and math and those kind of things. The, there is a three-page list of what it does fund, a lot of services. Every time services go up, obviously, good, innovative education have got to go down. And so that's one 
challenge that we see. The other challenge is that the um, rainy day fund. The rainy day fund is also part of this new proposal. The old rainy day fund, meaning the one that is in existence right now, it was the Board of Supervisors and the mayor that decided how it would be accessed. Now we have two funds. One is going to be accessed by the Board of Education. A blank check. Thank you. Given that of the estimated 109,000 children in San Francisco, only 56,000 are enrolled in public schools, how will the passage of this measure impact cost of living for families in San Francisco? So I think this will make it much easier for families to live here. Housing will always be an issue, but um, there's no increase in taxes. So this uses existing funds. Also, it's easier for families to live here, that they can access services at their school sites, arts, PE, science, um, those kind of things that pa parents sometimes had to pay for out of pocket. Also, we um, have this, this also funds affordable preschool for, for um, fa all families who need it. So I think this is a relief actually to families coming to San Francisco to live. I'm a fourth generation San Franciscan. I had to pay out of pocket for many of these services for my own children. I think having them at school sites, having counseling at school sites, um, our wellness centers, much of the medical services at school sites will be a relief to parents. Thank you. How do you respond, Ms. Berry? I'm assuming that we're talking about the, the, the idea that if you have all these services, then the population will increase, the, the public school population will increase. Our point of view is that that paradigm is incorrect. It, we think that families move into the city or move to any city only to see whether the education system is teaching their children how to write, how to read, how to fill up a job application. If you focus on services, that is not what families as a whole are looking for. How are the children learning? That's what we would like to see emphasized. And that is why we are concerned about the increase of services as opposed to complete emphasis on the type of education, the mode of education, innovative Serve, uh, I'm sorry, innovative ways of teaching children. Uh, we haven't talked about other modes besides the public school where you said there's a teacher in front of the class. There are other ways. Let's invest, let's put funding on that. Great, thank you. Will passage of this measure lead to higher enrollment rates? And if so, is there adequate funding for sufficient student to teacher ratio? We'll start with you. So actually, our enrollment is on the rise. And this, act, this fund does actually fund a lot of academics. It funds science and technology and engineering and math, all the innovation that you first mentioned. Um, first off, there is never enough money in our public education system. In California, we are the 50th in a nation in per pupil spending. So when you ask me, will this um, have adequate funding for it? Absolutely not. This is actually providing children with the well-rounded education that they deserve. And, um, and I have to say that San Francisco, we're proud of the San Franciscans. They have voted to reauthorize this before in the past, seeing the need to take the responsibility, the social responsibility to serve our children and our families. And so um, the answer to your question is, is that we, we are predicting much higher enrollment rates with the building boom in San Francisco. And we hope to be able to serve all those families that choose to use our quality high rated. Actually, we're one of the top in the state of California, our San Francisco Unified um, School System. They, we hope that they will choose to use our public school system. Thank you. What are your thoughts, Ms. Berry? I, again, I don't think that services are the key to enrollment, to good education. Um, if you look at the, actually read the proposal, you will see two pages of things that have absolutely nothing to do with science, with math, nothing. True, the enrichment fund is there also providing certain amenities, shall I say. However, I think that so much services, when, when you are funding these, for example, one uh, that is clearly in the proposition is uh, drug and help, help with drug use help with uh, LGBT issues, help with things that we may call them 
local services. But again, a family does not move in, does not put their children in public school in order to access services that have to do with those things that I just mentioned. It has to do with how well the children are learning. And I would say, is there enough funding? There, I agree, there never will be enough because the more that there is, the more that is spent. There is no ability to keep any, any cap on the spending. So if we have more funding, we will just have more services. So do we have enough? Funding for a proper ratio? Probably not and never will. Thank you. So we'll start with uh, final thoughts and we'll begin with you, Ms. Berry. Yes, I think that the paradigm needs to change. The idea that services as they increase is a good thing is something that perhaps should be rethought. If we are increasing services, it means that somewhere in the family, the education system, somewhere there is huge breakdown. There is mammoth failure. If we go by the rise in services, right? So the thing to do would be to not view the rise in services as a good thing, but as not so good. And therefore emphasize, as I say, the education. A rise in education is very easily measured. Can your child get out of school and go to college or get a profession or, or be able to fill out an application for a job? If the answer is no, we have failed. Thank you. Final comments from you, Ms. Pierre. Sure, thank you. And so I'd like to just address what uh, Marcy said and absolutely that education is their first mission, right? We have a college-going culture at our, our schools, actually have a very high graduation rate. As I said, of the largest urban um, school districts in California were rated at the top. So our students actually do well every year. But what we're finding, it's increasingly more difficult for families to live here. When we look at who we serve in San Francisco in our public school system, we see that the majority are children that are below the poverty level on a federal level. So you can imagine what their incomes are like in San Francisco to survive here. The reason we, act, we have these services too is to enhance actually the educational experience of our children. So Marcy, if you're saying that 73 fully credentialed teacher librarians is a service that is not necessary in the city, then I disagree with you. I think that before we had this proposition, we had zero elementary school librarians. All the libraries in our elementary schools were shut down. I don't think that 90 art teachers is actually a service. I think it's essential. I think this is a necessity in order to provide a very well-rounded education. So I would, vote, I would urge everybody to vote yes on Prop C because it's a vote not only for our children, but it's also for the future of San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for both for your time and for your comments. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelection.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. And you can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 4th.